It's all about quality and quantity on Bruise Day Tuesday. Here is Drez and Huck. There's the, the rejoin you really like. I think last week it was, it's quantity over. Yeah, that one gets on quality, not quantity. No, it's everything, both. It's all about the beer is what it is. And all about beer. Yours truly, Jerez in studio with Huck from Huck's Beer Buzz slash Huck was here, and we are drinking beer. beer. Brought to you by the Cellar Restaurant and Six Pack Store in downtown Blacksburg. We're popping tops from Shiner, or no, not Shiner Brewery, it's Shiner Beer from, from Spotzel, 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 Brewery. Spotzel Brewery. They must have a lot of pretzels out there because they have the, what is it, the TZL ending. They must be fans of pretzels at Spotzel. I don't know. No? You don't know? I don't remember seeing any pretzels. Really? But I will tell you what I did see in a minute. Okay, so I'm drinking the Shiner S'mores chocolate and marshmallow ale. And this actually has made with real Texas chocolate. I don't know what real che Texas chocolate is, but I'm proud to be able to drink some of it. It's real. It's real. And uh, and I guess this, does it have <sighs> Texas Mallows, or is it just the just the chocolate? What's that? Like, because it's you said chocolate and... And then s'mores, so it's chocolate. And yeah, marshmallow, white, white with marshmallow and chocolate. But it just says made with real Texas chocolate. So I guess they don't so have any real Texas marshmallows. Marshmallows, that's what I was asking. I guess not. I mean, so, marshmallows just like whipped up sugar, right? It must be. It mu it's sugar. With, it's got to have something else to make it be like that. I know it is basically sugar. I guarantee you that's the number one ingredient. But while you're looking that up, <laughs> I have Shiner's Trail Ale, which is a... Trail mix inspired ale it says it's got chocolate, nuts, dried fruit, and all natural flavors added. Coming in at six percent. Oh, that's there bigger go. than mine. Yeah. There you go. There's the hardiest beer of the day. Six percent. <laughs> We're getting getting wasted. Thanks, Shiner. Um, hey, I've been trying to cut back. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. I do. I am a fan of trail mix, man. Like, there's something about trail mix when you're out hiking. It feels like you really earned it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and trail mix is like. You know, the it's, best food on earth. It's like it's healthy, but, you yeah. know, it's got the sweets. It's It really is probably the best mix of, like, because you got, you got berries, you got nuts, you got your protein, and then you got a little, a little sweetness in there. Usually the, you can get ones with, like, the M&Ms or something. Well, the original is, you know, peanuts, oh, M&Ms, raisins. Mm -hmm. And then, but now. Well, nothing wrong with the raisins. Right. I like but raisins. But now, now they're like, oh, let's put some sunflower seeds. Hey, if I wanted healthy. I would get healthy. I'm fine with sunflower seeds. Yeah, there are. Right. You can even throw some pumpkin seeds in there for all I care. I can't. I'm not going to be able to tell you about marshmallows because I'm seeing words like heliax. A bioinorganic chemist is talking about a triple helix. It's a helix of helixes. No. Okay, so let's just say it's white, fluffy, and yummy. That's all I got. Okay. I think, I think we all know what marshmallows yeah, are. Yeah, I don't, I don't, now I don't really care how they make them. Although I, I was still, I was amazed that, you know, when I met Kirsty, she had never had or even heard of what a s'more was. So she was basically like uh, the, the kid from, <laughs> from Sandlot over here. And now her whole family is in town. And apparently even her like, I don't even know, 68 year old father and stuff. Never had a s'more. None of so them. So I guess you're having some more. Well, we bought a fire pit yes, for our new yes, home, yes. and uh, yes, we are planning a uh, yeah. planning to write that ship. All right. Well, now you got to get into the whole concept of: Do you burn the marshmallow? Do you brown I'm, the marshmallow? I'm going to teach them how I do it. I'm okay. sure they probably won't be able to pull that off on their first go. There's okay. a learning curve to s'mores. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. and, so, you know, personally. I like to microwave them sometimes because it's a lot easier. You get the exact right temperature. That is not the way to do it. But a lot of people light them on fire, blow them out, and make them. I don't do that. I, I mean, I don't that's like, like lazy, you know. Take your time. Well, not only that, but like then it's just scorched on the outside. It's not, you yeah. want the malo to really get hot so that it really melts the chocolate. There you go. Yeah, that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, so, we, we show up at Shiner in our bus after we've been to Bucky's, mm -hmm. and they drop us off, and they got a nice tent up for us, and they got... Um, well, they had beer on the bus to begin with. First of all, that's, that's a, you know you get that you made the first points. check mark right yeah, there. There you go. So we get off the bus and it gives us a little wristband and says that's free beer anywhere. 
So we all immediately head to the bar. Yeah, of course. And they're like, you get a discount in the store. I think I wore the Shiner shirt the other day, so I went and bought that. And they said, well, go get you some food. Now, what do you think they would serve us for food in Texas? You will never guess this, but. Well, I mean, your head goes to barbecue. Chicken fried steak, eight inches in diameter with gravy. That sounds about right. Yeah. I've never seen a chicken fried steak that big. In my life. And I ate a whole Eight one. inches in diameter. Eight inches and about an inch and a half thick. Wow. Chicken fried that steak. Is a, that would probably be the And all the accoutrements. I think there was some barbecue on there. I didn't care because I wanted the chicken fried steak. Mm. It was unbelievable. There's a girl, a part mm. of our group is small, big, small girl, big world. I don't know if you met her or not. Yeah, no, I remember she gave the she, Instagram yeah, thing. She ate a whole one too. I was like, damn it, girl. Yeah. She's like a little... Honey, what do you got? A hummingbird, you know, really, really <laughs> high energy. So yeah, she didn't needs, even hurt her. So, she needs the fuel. She needs the fuel. So yeah, we had a good time. So then they took us on the tour, and we hung around. They had a guy playing, um, like what I call cheese music. It's like you know Liz's music, uh, uh, James Taylor ish, Linda Ronstadt, all that. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was pretty nice and yeah. the perfect Texas sunshiny day. We had a really nice time there. Yeah, so this was, what, I guess a couple weeks ago now? Yeah, a couple weeks ago, yeah. And uh, so I guess late November, and so yeah, good weather. I mean, we've been we've been having fairly decent weather Yeah, no, weather it was great weather. Too, but, uh, but yeah, that's that's nice. The main event was at a, 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 brewer, a destination brewer, Vista, in uh, near near Austin, kind of southwest of Austin, and it's like 28 acres, and it was... They make, you know, really good beer. They had really good food. A lot of the ingredients grown on site. They had done a survey of this place and marked every tree mm-hmm. with a little metal plaque to say where it is. And then, of course, our bus driver drove through the branches of several of oh. those. <laughs> We're like, what the heck? Anyway, <laughs> but they, the, the facility was wonderful. They're getting ready to put in little houses, you know, and they do, well, they will do harvest hose. They don't really advertise it, but if you call them, they probably let you go. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like, you know, the whole harvest hose, I almost feel like they stole that from you, because you were doing that long before it was a thing. Well, actually, although, yeah. it's been around a long time. It's been right, around for right. like a decade, I, and I didn't realize it had been that old, but. But uh, ever since I started doing the Huck was here in RV, I just, I would call a brewery and say, yeah. hey, can I spend a night, you know, and if they say no, that's fine. The thing is, is most breweries have the space. Most of them close around 8 and don't open until noon. So if I get there at 8.30 and leave by 9 in the morning, you know, I'm not in any trouble to them. Yeah. Oh, so, but, I mean, usually you get there and you still, I mean, you're saying you get there at 8.30. Yeah, I try to get there you while get they're there before, still open. Yeah, of course. The one we stopped at right before we got to Dallas, we went in and I pull in. And I was like, man, there's not a lot of parking a lot here. And the guy comes out with me. He's well, we can just park right here. Like, all the parking space is right in front. Because it was late in the evening. I said, well, I don't want to block it up. He goes, well, the other people came. Parked there and then they left. I said, Well, you think they're coming back? He says, I don't really care at this point. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't come back. Yeah. But somebody else came, so we had neighbors. Like, we had neighbors about out of seven times, we six times we had neighbors. Okay. Which previously we haven't had it. So I think more people are actually doing it too. I can believe it. Yeah. It's, it did seem like when it came to Harvest Hosts, more often than not, we were the only ones there. Right. Anyway. But now you can go, you go online and you. You send them an email. Mm-hmm. You used to have to call them. Now you send them an email and they respond. Yeah. Usually pretty quickly. Yeah, it's so pretty. It's pretty simple and easy. It's 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 handy. Yeah, I like it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we could go on a whole tangent about oh, the yeah, RV travel is, thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we could go on off on that. The beer so, was the thing. Yeah. Anything. All right. So, so beer now for those of people for people that don't know, it started as like the beer bloggers conference, but then it's I guess it's grown from more than just that. Well, the problem is it's kind of shrunk the last two years. Well, we didn't have it last year as virtual. And the year before that, we didn't have that many people. And this year, they said we had seventy five, but I never saw seventy five people there. So you think it's shrinking? Yeah. Now. And there's actually saying that they might not be able to do it again, but a lot of us there's a core group of about ten or twelve. And we're like, let's go to Atlanta and we'll just go if they don't want to help. You know, we were talking about Atlanta or Wisconsin or... I've never been to Wisconsin. You Like Milwaukee? Yeah. I would assume. Like, where would you go in Wisconsin besides Milwaukee? Is it Wisconsin or what's the other one? Minnesota? Minnesota. Up that, there. that is one. Well, I, there's I don't a know lot of... Ver- I don't know. They, they were talking about that. It's, and then they were talking about uh, Arizona. You know? 
like the, Phoenix or something? Yeah, Phoenix, or and then you could take a side trip to the other big city, and there's a lot of beer there. But I think Atlanta, you know, we haven't been any. We've been to Asheville, and we've been to Tampa, but Atlanta's kind of got a really happening beer scene. Yeah. I, they I, really do. I can believe that. So did you? So I know that they have like panels and people talking, whatever. Did you? Did you come away from anything for this beer now? Any big revelations? Anything cool that you didn't well, really trademark know? Well, trademarking my name. They had a trademark <laughs> attorney on there, and uh, he's hooking us up. I'm going to trademark Huck Was Here. All right. Well, or Huck Was Here, but not Huck's Beer Buzz? You're not no, worried I'm about moving that on. Anymore? I'm yeah. moving on, yeah. Huck Was Here. Okay. Huck Was Here. Yeah, that's like It's a couple it's hundred to bucks it. to do it. So I don't yeah, it'd be well worth it. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of good... She was back with some more Instagram stuff. We had a photographer... And the biggest tip I got, I don't have my phone in front of me, is when you take a picture of a beer, you just try it when you do these beers, is turn your phone upside down so the camera's at the bottom looking up. And it's a whole different perspective. Oh, that, that is like probably a, a better look, isn't tip. it? Oh, yeah, it was a huge tip. So everybody was doing that. And, um, Interesting. I mean, just everything. I had a woman about... Um, It'll make the beer look bigger. I had a guy about writing a book, you know. He says basically, don't do it. It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> that was the takeaway. You don't make any money, and it's a lot of work. And then uh, just a lot. It was a good. It was really good. I thought all the all the present. They ended up calling me in because they didn't have anybody. When well, somebody could didn't show up, so I got up and did a, a talk about the effects of COVID. On I was gonna say, there you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they're like, as when she introduced me, she goes, "This is your leader, Hook." And everybody went, "Well, we didn't get a vote." <sighs> He's not our leader, but but you've been. I mean, I've been to all of them. I'm you, the only one now. I was gonna say, if you're the only one that's been to all of them, I knew that that was the case for a long while, and yeah. now you're the only last I'm standing. Not, then yeah, I yeah. would say that's fair. I think that's. I'm more like the queen, like Queen Elizabeth. I have no power, but I'm the the, the head, whatever you call. it. Everybody knows the Huck out there at the Beer Now conference. That's correct. So but we had a good time. Yeah. So when when do they make the call if they're gonna? Because I know. When, the one that I went to, they announced where the next year's was. Yeah, well, they did not. They there was nobody know. weird there from anywhere. Oh, boy. I think they're trying to get rid of it. Oh, that's a shame. But, I mean, it was their own fault. They sent us to Montana, which is, you know, it's great. it was great. But oh, yeah. most people aren't going to Montana. Yeah, that kind of that yeah, kind of brought. It's really hard to get to Montana. We were there in early June. That was the June. one that they announced when I was in, right. with, the one, with you at the one in D.C. Right. And so, I mean, that was tough. And this one was okay, but we were 45 minutes or almost an hour from the venue, our hotel. Oh, that. yeah. Damn. And, the, and not, to, not to say anything bad about the venue because it's really wonderful, but we had to walk, you know, like 15, 10 minutes to the bathroom, which I think I get it because that was, they didn't want porta potties. It's a pretty high end place, but still, a couple of porta potties would have been nice right there behind the tent. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. It well. was all outdoors. But that was pretty good. I mean, it's. Huck enjoyed the final Beer Now conference. I that did, I did not be. get a 10 gallon hat. Ah. Messed that up. Next time. Yeah, next time. Next time. Next time you're down there with Shiner. Oh, which... I did go to the brewery I own. Um, There's a, there's a co op brewery down there. What, what did you do? A GoFundMe with a brewery? What well, it's the... like 10 years ago, John Earhart said, why don't you uh, pay for this? You know, put a hundred bucks in this brewery, one hundred twenty-five dollars. So I own a share of this co-op brewery. Oh, okay. How yeah. was it? Was it terrible? No, it was good. The beer was good. The beer was good. What? Do you but remember was... the name of it? No, chance? I can't even remember. No, the name no, of it. That's how invested Huck is yeah. with this brewery. But the funny part was the guy was like working there, you know, and they it's like they're all about a living wage and all. But he was like, it, it, we he talked to us for like fifteen minutes, and there's like ten people in line, and he just ignored them because it didn't matter. Mm. I'll think of the name in a minute. All right. Well, while you're thinking that slash looking it up, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and untap Shiner's Trail Ale, which is a trail mix inspired brew uh, with chocolate nuts, dried fruit, and natural flavors added. I tell you what, I do get you do get notes of other stuff. I don't know if I'm still just thinking chocolate or the how I said that Spotzel sounds like pretzel, but I don't oh, know. That definitely like, has chocolate taste to it. it defi- well, I guess it does have chocolate in there. That's right. But for some reason, I'm picking up. I, I feel chocolate pretzel. I don't know why. Maybe it's the color of the can, too. Either way, it's delicious. This is good beer. This is much better than that pickle seltzer that you handed me at first. We had a pretzel beer. I'm trying to remember if it was there. We had the, the Snyder one, which oh yeah, we which, had that. By the right. way, yeah. I can't remember who was the collaboration. 
I went to the seller the other day and and I brought that up because Mikey was talking like, oh, well, we got this this pretzel beer. And I was like, oh, we did that on the show. But and then I realized we did the Marzen because yeah. it was for uh, Oktoberfest. They did uh, one that's a sour. Oh, so well, I'm got, going there. I got that one later. for BB. I haven't tried that yet. So I'm going there later. I'll talk to Mikey. Tell Mikey I said what's up. All right. Uh, and the, and tell also tell Mikey that I checked out the band Cynic that he recommended. If you're, uh, you're oh maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll try and dig up and see if I can actually play a Cynic song on the radio. Guess what band I show. checked out the other day. JT's band, Appalachian Space. I know, you saw them live down there. At They're Fort really Fest. good. Yeah, he actually was playing some of that for me yesterday, actually, because I was asking him about it. He's like, they're like, all their songs are original. Usually you come out and you start playing original song, Huck is going to head over and chat up the bartender. In this case, I was like, man, this stuff's pretty good. I'm so, trying to remember what he, he, he said. They came up and defined themselves as a, as a new genre. It was something like Funkadelic Bellic. Billy something. Billy yeah. Yeah. something. They're all right. But, um, a little jammy. Like it. Yeah, I asked him. I was just like, when's your next gig? And I guess right now they got a private gig coming up. But uh, I think they're doing an album. He said he would let me know. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, JT. Get our, it. our night guy. He's jamming. He's out He's there. He's jammer. He's out there. Okay, it's Black Star Co-op. Oh, it was the Sorry, I had a brain for it. Yeah. All right, so we get back to that. Black Star and we're getting back to the untapping of the trail. You know, this is a solid four. I'm going to give it a eh, I'll give it a four, two, five. It was good. What about that one? It's gone. So this good it's gone. more okay. This is, I mean, I appreciate it. You know, they actually gifted this beer to us. So, I mean, I got to be nice, whatever. But yeah. oh. I'm saying, I'm Sorry, not, this was a I'm five. Not, uh, not, not really here. getting the marshmallow, but <clears throat> it's still just a really, really good beer. And I think a lot of times when you get like a s'more beer, they try to make it all sweet and yucky. Too sweet. And this is not. This is another one you can hammer. What was the style on that one again, by the way? I don't even know. To be, it just to be says sure. it's a s'more. I'm going to say that it's like a pale ale is what I'm getting. It didn't look very pale. Well. You already drank it. but I drank it all. But I mean, I, this is a 425 as well. You can hand it to me and I can pour it into yeah. a glass and really get a good definitely, look at it. Definitely the chocolate's there. The marshmallow's it's not. chocolate marshmallow ale. Yeah, it's ale. It's just like, yeah, it looks to me like a pale ale. That, it's a, it's a, okay, yeah. You can drink a lot Maybe. of this beer. Okay. And it's good. So, well, I am about to drink a lot of this beer, or well, half of this beer. Well, and it hopefully will next be week we're going full on Santa Claus. All right, we're getting into the Christmas stuff. I mean, by then it's, I mean, Christmas is practically here. Oh, you know, we so. got two more weeks before Christmas. All right, all right. Well, yeah, Christmas beers. There's plenty of them, and, and we'll, actually, we have a cooler full that Drez and I are going to sort through. And whatever we decide, we're not going to do on the show. We're just going to chug later. So come on by. All right, pick us up, go. give us a ride home. There you have it. <laughs> Huck's Beer Buzz. Huck was here, uh, and uh, you can tell from the beer cans that will be laid around the Bear Studio by the end of it. As always, brother, I appreciate you coming in. Love the Bucky's uh, ugly sweater. And um, we'll take a quick break. We'll get back with the tunes. It's right here, 105.3 The Bear. Stick around.